How many years since 1994 have I been preaching to the choir? I have some very loyal listeners out there who understand that we're living in a putative dictatorship, a rather benign dictatorship up until, up until quite recently, but a dictatorship nevertheless, a, a one-party system, a government media complex, a party of Democrats or Republicrats. I've been preaching that message since 1994. There's a lot of Johnny, Johnny come latelys now who went to the Bush White House, had dinner with George Bush, enjoyed George Bush, carried water for George Bush, and now suddenly they hate the Republican Party. Well, welcome to the party, boys. Welcome to the party. I'm glad you woke up in time. So let's listen now to this. This is shocking. Nikki Haley, who was supposed to attack Obama, well, let us say criticize him. That's the standard operating procedure. Uh, leading member of the opposition party gets up and rebuts the statements of the president, who normally lies his way through a, a State of the Union address. That's what they do for a living. And the better the liar they are, the higher up they go uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the food chain of politics. So she attacks conservatives. Listen to clip. Is it 26, Robert? Let's hear it. We need to be honest with each other and with ourselves. While Democrats in Washington bear much responsibility for the problems facing America today, they do not bear it alone. There is more than enough blame to go around. We as Republicans need to own that truth. We need to recognize our contributions to the erosion of the public trust in America's leadership. We need to accept that we've played a role in how and why our government is broken. And then we need to fix it. Okay, so the speech could have been written by uh, Steven Spielberg, could have been written by any of the Democrat speechwriters for her. She goes on and then attacks. Where does she attack Donald Trump? The loudness speech. Where'd that go? That's the one I really wanted to hear. I played one. Okay, that's not the really the best one. Here she attacks Donald Trump, Nikki Haley, the uh, female quizzling of our times in 15. Today, we live in a time of threats like few others in recent memory. During anxious times, it can be tempting to follow the siren call of the angriest voices. We must resist that temptation. No one who is willing to work hard, abide by our laws, and love our traditions should ever feel unwelcome in this country. Really? Now listen to the next one in 16. This is the enemy within the Republican Party, Nikki Haley in 16. In many parts of society today, whether in popular culture, academia, the media, or politics, there's a tendency to falsely equate noise with results. Some people think that you have to be the loudest voice in the room to make a difference. That's just not true. Often the best thing we can do is turn down the volume. When the sound is quieter, you can actually hear what someone else is saying. And that can make a world of difference. Well, Obama speaks very softly. That's how he got where he is. And I think we need very loud voices of opposition, Miss Haley. And I think that while we're talking about Nikki Haley, uh, the child of Indian immigrants, and I don't mean Native American immigrants, I think we need to look at that picture because I have supported the East Indians, if you want to call that society East India, if you want to call them Indians, I, whatever you want to say, as some of the finest, smartest people on the planet. I've done so for 20 years. But what I see coming into the country today is really not about that. It's about lowering the wages of American workers for the greedy buccaneers in Silicon Valley. And I think Nikki Haley is on the take, as far as I'm concerned, from these very same lobbyists, for the very same forces that have given us the likes of Facebook, Microsoft, and the others who want to lower wages. That's what I would suggest. So Nikki Haley has now distinguished herself as the quizzling of our time, doing as much damage as, he, as she possibly can uh, to Donald Trump and anyone who opposes uh, this uh, academic, subversive administration. Uh, but I want to go back to the big topic of the day. We must never forget it. And that is Obama's alternate universe. The statement that he made about ISIS last night was so shocking that as I was leaving dinner in a quiet restaurant, kind of eight, eight, I don't know when it was, they were replaying him talking about ISIS. I tried to ignore most of the speech. So I left after 15 minutes. I couldn't take it. Went to dinner, had a couple of drinks. And as I was leaving, I saw on a TV screen in the middle of the sports, there was Obama saying this about ISIS. Listen carefully to this lie. Listen. 
as we focus on destroying ISIL. Over-the-top claims that this is World War III just play into their hands. Masses of fighters on the back of pickup trucks, twisted souls plotting in apartments or garages, they pose an enormous danger to civilians. They have to be stopped. But they do not threaten our national existence. That... Mania. That is mania. the story ISIL tell wants Tell that to, to the tell. parents of the That's people the just killed in San Bernardino, maniac. Maniac! Maniac. What world does he live in? How many times am I going to say this today? As often as I have to. 1950s Russia. Stalin said there can be no homicide in paradise, meaning a socialist paradise that he was the dictator of. And if a detective wanted to follow up a homicide investigation, he was told to say it was an accident because there were no homicides in paradise. Stalin, the brutal dictator, uh, said that homicide could only occur in a capitalist society. This is exactly the mindset of Barack Obama. Again, a parallel universe. ISIS is not a threat. Ragtag bunch of guys in a pickup truck doesn't pose a threat. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to do with one of the world's great religions. Did you hear the speech? I really hope you understand the danger we are in because of this academic, subversive administration. I'm going to take your calls the minute I come back on the Savage Nation. Well, we're almost out of time in this hour, and I want to go to one last call of Joe on KKOH out of Reno. Go ahead. Please make your point quickly. Michael, I got a comment on Nikki Haley. Uh, personally, I think the Republicans are just as uh, guilty uh, for our state of uh, our country as the Democrats. Uh, John Boehner gave us this uh, crazy... So wait, 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 wait. So you're saying she's right by saying we're, Republicans are too conservative? What, what are you saying here? I don't get it. John Boehner in the Congress gave... Uh, this okay, thanks for the call. We know what John Boehner did, but he's long gone. Folks, I want to talk about this in the next hour. I read this this morning in the New York Post. People are dropping acid to perform better at work. They're taking micro doses of LSD or other psychedelics to feel a little bit of an energy lift, to get a little bit of insight. And they're, and they're not really tripping, but they're on acid. People are dropping acid today to perform better at work. LSD microdosing. My question is, how many in the Obama administration are microdosing on LSD, living in a parallel universe? I'm not going to name names because I don't know, but Joe Biden said there was no apology, and yet we played the apology. Barack Obama says that ISIS is not a threat, and yet there are people in the ground right now, in America right now in San Bernardino, in Boston, in Denver, in Texas, in New York, put in the ground by ISIS followers in this country. Who's microdosing in the Obama administration? We're told that Iran is a safe, peaceful nation, and they give back our men? Who's microdosing? It's not me. I just had shrimp, salt and pepper shrimp. That's what I just macrodosed on. I macrodosed on salt and pepper shrimp for, for lunch. But who's microdosing on LSD? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. They call me Mellow Yellow. They call me Mellow Yellow. Quite right, Slim. They call me Mellow Yellow. It is a fact that many people in America are now microdosing on LSD, thinking that it gives them a, a greater creativity. Well, I found in my lifetime that people I knew who used the LSD were amongst the dumbest people I ever met on the planet. 
uncreative. The truly creative people never use acid, never have and never will. If they did when they were young, they realized it was a mistake. But now I read that microdosing of LSD has become a, a fashion uh, somewhat at work. I guess that's because Steve Jobs was, a, was a, an acid head of some kind. And so they say people who want to be the next Steve Jobs are dropping micro doses of acid, one-tenth the usual amount of LSD or the psychedelics, such as mushrooms, to get a little energy lift and uh, such. And so they're working now on LSD. It's nothing. This is just like coffee to them. Well, I won't talk about LSD because I think it's what it is. It came and went during the age of Nixon for a good reason. It's one of the most dangerous substances to ever hit the human brain. LSD has destroyed more minds than it has cured. And LSD should, of course, never be used by anybody in any dosage. But, you know, saying that today in the age of the subversive, it's uh, it's laughable, I guess, to many people who are on the equivalent in marijuana. You know, small doses of LSD are equal to high doses of marijuana, incidentally. But you have to be on micro doses of LSD or macro doses of cannabis to believe that this incident with our two Navy boats going off course, the sailors being forced to apologize, Biden saying they didn't apologize. We're told Iran is a great country, wonderful people, is not related somehow to the lifting of Iranian sanctions this weekend. Tehran will be given back billions upon billions of dollars by the United States and by the EU just this weekend. This was orchestrated as sure as I'm sitting here. The lifting of sanctions, which will include an end to an EU embargo on the imports of Iranian oil, will have huge ramifications on the global oil market because Tehran is going to immediately add a half a million barrels a day to its crude exports, which will also drive oil prices already low to an even lower place. It's going to have a big effect upon the Russian ruble and a big effect on Russia. Not a good thing. Many of you are stupid enough to think that you want to crush Russia. The exact opposite of what you should want. But since we have a bunch of academic morons running the country and the world, anything is liable to happen. I want to begin this hour the way I began the last hour and the hour before that with two sound bites. One is of Joe Biden, who is either insane or an absolute liar. I don't know which is true saying there were no apologies, and then we'll play for you the apology of the U.S. Navy to the Iranian terrorists. Listen. No, there's no apology. There's nothing to apologize for. When, when, you, when you have a problem with the boat, you apologize the boat had a problem? No. There, and there was no looking for any apology. I mean, this was just standard nautical practice. It was a mistake. That was our fault. And we apologize for our mistake. Uh uh, in your GPS, right, in GPS track, it is completely that you have penetrated to Iran through our water? I believe so. How was the Iranian behavior with you? The Iranian behavior was fantastic while we were here. We thank you very much for your hospitality and your assistance. Uh, didn't you have a special problem? We had no problem, sir. No, we had special K put into our oatmeal. We had no special problem. This is a new low for the U.S. military under the uh, academic subversives running the Navy uh, and the State Department and the executive office and virtually every other branch of this crazy left-wing academic establishment called the Obama administration. That opens up 15 lines at 855-407-282. It opens up seven lines. If you care to join the conversation, this is our number three. We have a little more time right now because we have new stations joining us. And you have an open line to the world at 855-407-282. These are some of the other headlines in the news. Are you ready for them? Because here they come. University professor pleads guilty to smuggling ivory. A college professor in Minnesota pled guilty to illegally smuggling items made from elephant ivory from the United States to China. Now, you know I give money to organizations that save the elephants. It's a heartbreaking story. St. Cloud State University Professor of Philosophy, E. Wee Zung, also pled guilty Wednesday to violating the U.S. Lacey Act, which bans trade in wildlife, blah, blah, blah. Under a plea deal, Z. Wong agreed to pay a $500,000 fine. Wonder where he got the money from. He also could face roughly three years in prison when he's sentenced in May. No, I have a better solution. Anyone who trades in ivory should be dropped naked in the jungles of... Rwanda. 
and be forced to run for their 